using the DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor with Arduino Uno and displaying the results on the serial monitor, 16 by 2 line and 3.5 inch touchscreen LCD. Instead of starting out with the most complicated, convoluted thing with all kinds of extra stuff in it, I thought it would be more helpful to also show the basics, just how to get this thing up and running. Adafruit has some good info on these DHT style sensors. You can come over here to find more info, and we're also going to use the Adafruit library to make things easy. The DHT22 can do 0 to 100% humidity with an accuracy between 2 and 5%, depending where in the range you are reading. It can do temperatures minus 40 to plus 80 Celsius, plus or minus half a degree accuracy, and you should not read from the sensor more than once every two seconds. It can run 3 to 5 volts, takes a couple of milliamps while doing a reading, and then there's another more technical data sheet more in depth. So there's four pins on here. Starting from the left, pin 3 is not used. Otherwise we have our plus power supply, our data out, and then our ground at the far right. And the sensor needs a pull-up resistor, so sometimes when these sensors are mounted on an actual breakout board, they may have a pull-up resistor built in. But I'm using a standalone sensor like this, so I would need an external pull-up. I'm using the internal pull-up on the Arduino I.O. port, which is several tens of K resistance. And it's working fine for me, but a lot of sources say the internal pull-up on the Arduino may not be strong enough. So if you have issues reading the data, you should add an external 4.7 to 10k between the data and VCC. I've made several projects with this sensor to show how to use it in different ways. A simple 16 character 2 line display, a plain serial monitor interface, or a touchscreen. So starting with the simplest serial interface, it's a very basic schematic. I am using a 5 volt Arduino, so it's okay to power the sensor from 5 volts and then ground. The data pin goes to digital pin 2 and using the internal pull up so I didn't need a resistor and pin 3 is unconnected. So that's what I have set up right here. I'm using an Arduino screw terminal shield, that's what's going on here. So I'm hooking up to the 5 volts and ground with a screw terminal and then I'm plugging into digital input 2. And here's the sensor just going straight to those pins. To get the DHT sensors working with the Adafruit libraries, from the Arduino library manager, I installed DHT sensor library and Adafruit unified sensor. Those can also be found on GitHub at these paths. The DHT library needs this Adafruit unified sensor library as a dependency. This is based heavily on the Adafruit example sketch, just intending to do it as easy as possible to show how to get the sensor working with the important parts. So we include the DHT library. We are using data pin 2 and our sensor is DHT 22, but you can also use 11 or 21. Then we create the sensor object on that pin of this type of sensor. Now we can access DHT within the sketch. So in the setup, DHT.begin to initialize the sensor. And in the loop, we are going to read the humidity and the temperature into these float variables. So DHT.read humidity or read temperature to do that. When reading the temperature, we can optionally pass a Boolean true or false. If that's true, we are going to read degrees Fahrenheit. If this is false, we get a degrees Celsius reading. So when I'm reading Celsius, I pass a false. So now I've got humidity in percentage and two temperature readings. Print out humidity and temperature on the serial monitor. Wait at least two seconds until reading again. So here's how it looks when it's running. Humidity percentage is printed out and the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Now to use a 16 by 2 LCD with a backpack that does I squared C, here's the hookup. Still using the sensor with an internal pull up on digital pin 2, take 5 volts and ground from Arduino to power the LCD, serial clock and data to the Arduino. And from here on out, just using displays, I've covered how to do these displays in the past, so I won't go fully through it. 
I will just show the basics of scaling up the original DHT serial monitor sketch to do displays. So what we have to add now, I'm using the HD44780 library. That's the driver chip on those LCDs. And we include the wire library for the I2C communication. Everything else is practically the same for initializing the temperature humidity sensor. We also have to create the object for the LCD display so we can talk to it using LCD as an interface. Initialize the sensor and the LCD. We begin with 16 by 2 lines. Then in the loop, we read the humidity and the temperature again, print the readings on the serial monitor, and also on the LCD. Then wait two seconds, do it again. So on the LCD, we are using two different lines to show temperature and humidity. So for temperature, we set the cursor in the top left of the screen and print out the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. To get the degree symbol, I'm sending character 223. Then for humidity, we go to the next line and print out the humidity. Next, I wanted to use my touchscreen LCD, and this time I had to move the digital input down to digital 19, which is a shared function with analog 5, because the touchscreen takes up most of these pins. But this one down here is not used, at least on my display. Mine is an MCU friend, and it's not exactly like this, but it is very similar. So this pin down here is analog 5 or digital 19 and on this board you can see at least on the bottom side here it does not route anywhere i don't know what's going on on the top side my specific board has a different footprint here and mine actually has a trace on this side routing over to a pad here but there's no chip on here it's just going to a footprint so i tested that out as a digital input and it worked so that's what i went with so this one has power pins some control pins and data pins, and it uses a lot. And when plugging this into the UNO, the USB connector on the UNO would be up on the top edge here. So on this back end, the way it aligns, because there's not an exact amount of pins to go with the UNO, so you could put it too far up, the back pins here line up with the back pins on the UNO here. So then the shield plugs in and there's some leftover pins. So since I do want to access power ground and this digital 19 for the sensor, if I plug this shield in, I'm taking up these pins. I could either then solder some wires onto the footprint here underneath the board, or I could use the screw shield and I can plug the display into the headers on the shield and then I still can access screw terminals for the sensor. Now the back pins on the display go to the back pins on the UNO. So the UNO has the screw shield plugged into the pins. It's got extra headers, so the display shield plugs into those headers as if it's directly on the UNO. And now there's screw terminals. Now with the touch screen, I've got two sketches but in both cases, we can change degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. So it's already in Celsius. Change it to Fahrenheit and the graphic changes as well as the readout. The humidity is written out here and it's showing on the meter. So I made two sketches called Display 1 and Display 2. Display 1 shows a full screen thermometer and has buttons to change Celsius Fahrenheit and it shows humidity and temperature at the top as well as temperature graphically. Display 2 squishes this down and uses the extra space for humidity. Since they are practically the same but number 2 has the extra humidity needle, I'll just go through that sketch briefly because we did cover this in the past. So I'll put links that are relevant to all of these various display sketches. But to get going with this sensor on this display, now we are adding Adafruit graphics library, the MCU friend library for the screen, and the Adafruit touchscreen library allows us to use the resistive part of the screen to click on it. So now we change the sensor pin to 19. Everything else is pretty much the same. Anything touchscreen related was covered in previous videos. And the only other difference really, I have a few extra defines and variables 
So because this sketch gets a little more elaborate than the previous ones, when I'm reading Celsius versus Fahrenheit by passing true and false into the temperature reading function, I just define them as degrees C is false and degrees F is true. So in the code, I can just refer to what it is I'm trying to do instead of trying to remember what does true mean, what does false mean. So when I'm reading the temperature from the sensor, I use this Boolean variable for true and false to tell me if I'm reading degrees C, which is false, or degrees F, which is true. I start out in Celsius. Then I have variables for reading humidity and the temperature I'm going to display. I'm doing a two second sample interval on the sensor. And now because the sketch is more complicated, I can't just put a delay for 2000 milliseconds at the end of the loop. I have to track it with the millisecond timer. So I have a variable for that. Then there's things related to drawing the graphics, initialize the sensor, the display, draw some initial graphics. And in the loop, we check if we have at least two seconds of a time lapse since our last reading. If so, go in and read the temperature. So here's where we pass the Boolean variable true or false to decide if we are reading Celsius or Fahrenheit. So display temp, when we are printing it out on the screen, we check if these display units were true or false, same as comparing it to Celsius, Fahrenheit, and then we know, do we print degrees C or degrees F? The rest of the sketch is updating the graphical display, which we've covered elsewhere. So that's really it. There are several sketches showing different ways to read the DHT22 temperature humidity sensor and display it.